Greg O'Connor, can you hear us? We're talking about you. Can you hear us? Yes, I can, John. Nice to be able to pop into the conversation when someone's talking about you. Yeah, thank you for joining us. More than half the vote counted in Ohio. You're establishing a reasonable kind of majority now, getting up towards 1,000 votes. It's still tight, but do you are you starting to relax and enjoy the night? I'm, I'm determined to enjoy the night anyway, John. It's, uh, I'm looking at this like, you know, you jump on a plane to London, someone else is on the front of the plane, there's nothing you can do about it, just sit back and relax and enjoy it. I'm trying to do that. But uh, do you just say that I'm a 1,000 ahead now? Uh, approaching, uh, just, we're just going to get the latest. So that was just me, Poetic Licence. I think you're approaching a 1,000. Um, 817. Uh, yeah, oh, you, you can be as poetic as you like at that level. 8, 817, that, that, yeah, you're right, that was a, a real reasonably generous piece of Swedish rounding, but your majority is going up. Uh, well. Oh, well, that's, that's good to hear. Um, and look, I, it it's, was always going to be tight. I think what happened with this one, John, I, I heard your introduction, is that as Peter Dunn very quickly pointed out when he pulled out, he made it harder for me, not easier. And my biggest worry was that complacency, people thought I had a lay down misere because Peter had pulled out, failing to realise that actually the right consolidated, the left then splintered because the Greens came back in. But so hopefully enough people have realised that I needed their vote. So very grateful. What are the issues there? What are the issues in that electorate? Well, they're the usual issues around are mental health. You probably heard during the week about the doctors Absolutely. from Nio and Kandala who had written that letter, desperate. So, And that is something, the one thing I came out of this is that um, mental health issues are no respecter of postcodes. Um, and that is the one thing that came up, whether you're in the high or low socioeconomic part of the electorate. Um, locally, um, the old good old Johnsonville Mall, and Stride had better step up to this because uh, they're getting some um, pretty heavy local um, animosity around them. Um, it's the usual transport stuff, a lot of it's local body stuff, um, but you know, the housing, um, people really worried that uh, their kids can't get into housing. So actually, when you really dig down into it, a lot of the issues though, it is quite a reasonably, on average, well-off electorate, um, the issues aren't that much different than they are across the rest of the country. Uh, I don't know if Jane uh, Patterson, who's sitting to my left, has anything she wants to ask you, Greg. Um, I'd love, Jane, can you look at how uh, Ginny Anderson is going in Hutt South? Because Ginny Anderson had a crack at Peter Dunn there in that electorate. Um, Greg, what about the vibe there, the sense... So, so Labour people in Ohariu will be delighted that uh, they look at this stage to be taking the electorate. Um, What's the feeling about how the party is going overall, sitting at about 36% with the Nats on 46%, with 39% of the vote counted? What, what's your take on that? Oh, people will be disappointed. Um, it's looking like uh, another three years. Um, of the same and uh, we'd all hope that you know with the um, the trigger um, that people had actually really understood that if they want the sort of change that Labour governments have instigated in the past um, the real change that means that we become more like the country that all our ancestors came to which was a fair one you know that we got away from the more and more wealth and fewer and fewer hands scenario um, it's happening here so there'll be a real disappointment that um, you know our schools education housing health etc um, that really um, it's not looks like it's gonna be another three years of the same um, so there will be a bit of disappointment there but they'll you know, locally they'll be turned this is the first time you know since Peter walked away from Labour um, some years ago, as you'll be aware, um, and that uh, not only did he walk away, but of course the Labour supports became system um, was decimated a little. So this is a real reward. You know, you get those people that really do the job. You know, it's humbling. They've stood. The same people have, you know, stood behind various candidates that have come and gone. And you know, I really feel good for them. And if I can deliver this tonight, you know, I, the best thing when I go to bed tonight, I think, you know, I've done it for some people that have have done this, turned out, you know, they've been on those cold halls every week, every month during the campaign. So, you know, I, and I know this is an easy thing to say, but I really do feel for those guys that I've delivered for them finally.
Greg O'Connor, live from uh, Labour Party HQ in that uh, electorate, or how do you, where he is uh, in the process of claiming the seat back for Labour. Of course, remember Peter Dunn started his political career as a Labour MP, a long-term constituency MP with the United Party. Jane Patterson pointing out the United have 52 party votes. I think in that electorate it really was about Peter Dunn as an electorate MP. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important part of the night because we've been talking without interruption for almost two hours, but we're about to take a break for five glorious seconds of pips. <laughs>